Hello and welcome to this presentation of Plumber Math, the offset and rolling offset being produced by Bridgeland Technical College. My name is Tom Hicken and I'm an instructor here in the Plumbing Apprenticeship. Today we're going to look specifically at the math that you need to know in order to pass the practical exam for the Utah State Journeyman Test. First thing we want to make sure that you're clear on is that you understand what an offset is. This definition comes from the International Plumbing Code, Chapter 2. An offset is a combination of approved fence that makes two changes in direction, bringing one section of the pipe out of the line, but into a line parallel with the other section. Mm, that sounds a little complicated. Let me sum this up. You have a pipe. It needs to move around something. So we're going to move it either horizontally or vertically, and we need a pipe to connect those. We use a couple of fittings, create an angle, and voila! we have an offset. Now in this particular video all of the offsets we're going to deal with are 45 degree fittings and that creates 45 degree offsets. Let's have a look. First thing we need to remember is the basics of the Pythagorean theorem. When it comes to finding the sides of any triangle and I'm not just talking about the 45 degree angle triangles that we're gonna mainly deal with here any and every triangle have this same relationship. You're going to have three sides. Let's call one A, another one B, and another one C. C is typically going to be the long side, we'll call it the diagonal. But there's this magical relationship that exists, discovered by old man Pythagoras. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You've heard it, you know it, let's use it. Here's a triangle with 245 degrees. Now one thing that we also want to remember is that any triangle with 45 degree angles have two sides that are the exact same length. So in this particular image we're going to call it x. x squared plus x squared equals c squared. You can see how we're breaking this down, right? We can add those together, remember from your algebra days, 2x squared is the same as x squared plus x squared. So we've got this down to 2x squared equals c squared. From there we're going to take the square root and rewrite it slightly. You can see then x times the square root of 2 equals c. Well let's just get this done already, right? What's the square root of 2? It's 1.414. Gentlemen, there's the number. If you are a plumber, you must know that number forever and ever, so long as you're a plumber. That's where it comes from, the square root of 2. And in order to find the diagonal, we very simply times either side by 1.414, and we've got it. Let's have a look on an offset. Here's a practical project that we might be dealing with. The base is the long pipe across the bottom, showing 10 inches in length. This particular offset is going to rise by 6 inches. We can see that on the far left side of this diagram. There's a 6 inches indicating from the center of the base to the center of that horizontal pipe coming away from the base, we have 6 inches. That means our triangle is going to look something like this. 245 degree angles and a 6 inch difference in its elevation. Let's plug it in. Now we can take it the long way. Run it right back through a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's what we've done on the top. Look there. c squared equals 6 squared plus 6 squared. c squared equals 36 plus 36. c squared then equals, as we add those, 72. Let's just take the square root of 72 and what do we get? C would equal 8.48. Now, we established before that we can quite simply times it by 1.414 and get exactly what we want. Look at the bottom. C equals 6 times 1.414. And yes, it works. We have 8.48. Brilliant. You don't have to go through the whole a squared plus b squared equals c squared on a typical offset like this. It works every time just times it by 1.414 and away you go. Here are a couple of other offset diagrams 
that are going to use the exact same thing. You can see the base, it angles up and then levels out on a horizontal. That angle is on 45 degrees, so we just find the rise. In this case, it's 5 inches, times that by 1.414, and you're good. How about a vertical base? The vertical base is that pipe standing up larger diameter on the right. It's going to come away from the base and then we see our offset. You can see the triangle kind of drawn into there. The bottom shows a 5 inches from one fitting to the other fitting. And if we times that 5 times 1.414, we'll have it. Center to center on fittings. That is our offset. But that's not the most complex we're going to do because we often have to do the rolling offset. What's the difference? Well, rolling offset moves in two positions, one vertical and one horizontal. You can see from this diagram we have a wall, and then we're going to kind of follow the wall. This particular diagram looks like they're using 90s. And there's a horizontal difference and a vertical difference, meaning it came up as well as over. This usually requires more fittings, but we can do this with 245s. It's going to look something more like this. Now in most of the images for today, we're going to draw a rectangular prism or box around these. This is going to help us to identify how this pipe is moving through the space and the dimensions around it. Have a look at this. Here is a rolling offset. How can we tell? Frankly, sometimes these uh, diagrams are difficult to figure out. But what we look for is a rise, a vertical difference, as well as a horizontal difference, an offset or a run. On this one, we can see there's a rise of 8. And the center of that pipe coming away from the base comes over to the left 5 inches. We have our two measurements. Let's put it into a prism like this. You can see on the bottom we have the offset of 5 inches and a rise of 8 inches. So how do we figure this out? Well, first of all, let's start with what we do know. We can see a triangle inside of here. Is this a triangle that would use 245 degrees? No. Why not? Well, because two of those sides are not the same. I don't even know what those angles are, but I can tell you they're not 45s. But we can still solve for, for the diagonal. Here's how we would do it. And this is step one for calculating. We take our a squared plus b squared equals c squared and plug our numbers in. 8 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. That would be 64 plus 25 equals c squared. Add those together and we get 89, and that equals c squared. Let's take the square root of 89, and we end up with 9.43. Now, an inexperienced or forgetful plumber would say, yay, I've got my answer, and start building. But this would be catastrophic, because it would be too short. We've only done half the work, and it's not enough. This is why. Have a close look at this diagram. We have figured out one triangle. That's the triangle that has a side of 8 and a side of 5. And it gave us 9.43. But what we're dealing with is a triangle that has two 45 degree angles. Do you see it? It's green. Two of the sides are the same. There's a 9.43. And across the bottom, you see the word setback, 9.43. This is the triangle that we're dealing with as we're moving that pipe using 45s. And because we're dealing with a simple triangle now with two 45 degree angles, all we have to do is multiply that by 1.414. This is step two for calculating a rolling offset. We have to calculate for the diagonal. We take the diagonal, which we now know is 9.43, times it by 1.414, and end up with 13.34. Yes, now you can go to work. Now you can build because your rolling offset will have the correct diagonal length. 
let's review. In order to create the number you need for a rolling offset, you must go through these two steps. One, calculate for the true offset using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, a and b are the differences in height and the horizontal movement or offset. You've got to find those on the sheet. Once you have that, you take that number C and times it by 1.414 and you'll have what you need to do your roll. Now there are some occasions when they give us yet another challenge. These are the advanced practical projects where you will have both an offset and a rolling offset in the same project. Here it is. Oh dear, look how complex. Lines all over the place. That practical with so many fittings. Hey, don't get overwhelmed. This is stuff we've already done. All we have to do is just work it through. There's an offset at the bottom of this, right off of the base. It goes into a typical offset. We can handle that. Then there's two more 45s creating a rolling offset. We've done rolling offsets. We can handle that. So here's how it would go. Find that offset at the base. It comes up four inches times four by 1.414 and we've got 5.67. Now let's look at our rolling offset. We're gonna follow those two steps. Step one, we've got to calculate for that true offset and that's that diagonal on the other triangle in red. One of the dimensions we're dealing with is four inches. That's the horizontal movement. And the rise of three inches is the other one. Plug it into a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we have four squared plus three squared equals c squared. That's 16 plus nine equals c squared. Add those together and we get 25 equals c squared. And you know the square root of 25. We end up with a simple 5 inches. Now we go to step 2 for calculating the rolling offset. We're going to take that number we generated, 5, and times it by 1.414. Our diagonal green triangle would now be 7.07. .07. Finally, on some practicals, they may require us to use what we know from this rolling offset to find other measurements. Let's call this measurement F. You can see it on the right side below the number 10. What they're saying is from the first 45 degree fitting in that rolling offset to the 90 past the offset, we have a total of 10 inches but they're not giving us that measurement from the second 45 degree fitting to the 90, and that's what we need for F. What we do know is that we have 10 inches. What we also know is that triangle we figured out for our rolling offset. What we need is that five, because if you can look across the bottom, and we have five, this is the same dimensions across the whole rectangle. The yellow line you can now see is also five. The measurement is the same. So we can subtract 5 from 10 and F equals 5. Let's summarize. If all of this becomes very frustrating or complex to you, please boil it down to these two steps for a rolling offset. Just remember, you've got to find your two changes, the rise and the offset and plug them into a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's step one. And step two is to multiply that by 1.414. You can do this. You will succeed on your practical test and you will become a fantastic journeyman. Good luck.